There is currently a roughly a $4 billion global market for hydrogen peroxide, or H2O2. You might use it to clean cuts or to rinse your mouth or to bleach your hair, among other things that it's used for. Now, since the 1940s, it has been made with highly flammable petroleum-based solvents. But two Houston-based entrepreneurs got the bright idea to change the production process. Explosions at Arkema's chemical plant outside Houston in the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey last summer put a noxious odor in the air. Sean Hunt and Gaurav Chakrabarty recognized it more than 30 miles away, hydrogen peroxide. We smelled it everywhere. Plant accidents are only too familiar in Houston, the world's biggest petrochemical manufacturing market. In 2016, an explosion at a different hydrogen peroxide plant there killed one worker. The petroleum-based solvent it's flammable. It's kind of like a bomb waiting to happen. Oh, okay. At their company, Solugen, Hunt and Chakrabarty, his friends call him G, use a new process to make hydrogen peroxide, the same stuff we use to clean cuts and countertops. G is also a doctor. He learned pancreatic cancer cells often contain high levels of hydrogen peroxide. Seven years of research led him to an enzyme, a protein, that aids in the production of hydrogen peroxide. He won't say how, but G figured out how to make an enzyme which does just that. A med school classmate introduced G to her husband, who turned out to be Hunt, who was at MIT studying ways to make hydrogen peroxide with metals like platinum. I'm like, that's unbelievable. So it's like, a, like you know, muscle milk, like a protein powder. Hunt had been taught that enzymes were weak and unreliable. Uh, the secret sauce to it all is in this fridge. But with machine learning, they've extended its lifespan from minutes, then days to weeks. The ability to engineer those enzymes efficiently uh, and for low cost, low computing power was not possible five years ago. Most people from a petrochemical background, they have no idea that this has occurred. We are Solugen. They pitched the idea in 2016 and received immediate requests to buy their bio peroxide. So Hunt built a reactor using parts that he bought at a Home Depot. It's now our museum piece. Now, a bigger version of their mini mill, which mixes sugar, air, and water with the enzyme, took their hydrogen peroxide to market in the form of cleaning wipes. It's called Ode to Clean. It's the first cleaning wipe made 100% from plants. In just a few weeks, at four to five bucks a pack, they were on track to sell $4 million worth in a year. No wonder a major commercial wipe maker has already bought the brand. That deal may be announced this month. But G and Hunt have even bigger plans. Solugen also has an expensive setup to concentrate its peroxide. Taking out the water makes it cheaper to ship. But Chakrabarty and Hunt believe their mini mills can be built anywhere, decentralizing production. They're still fairly large, but they're nothing compared to an oil refinery. We would sell them the mini mill, we sell them the enzyme. They make their own hydrogen peroxide, and there is no shipping involved. 50 years ago, investors looking for a tip heard the word plastics. Now they might hear enzymes or plant sugars. I think we already are. I'll guarantee you in, in 50 years, we're gonna be using plant sugars for many of our chemistries. If you can make chemicals from plants, plants are everywhere. You don't need to have these big centralized facilities. Isn't that fascinating? Now entire communities use hydrogen peroxide to purify their water. G and Hunt see a day where those communities will make their own H2O2, and there may be a therapeutic application. Dr. Chakrabarty's work helped lead to a drug aimed at fighting pancreatic cancer that is in phase two testing.